Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our little recorded worship service once again. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the first Sunday after Easter, and we're still focusing on the joy of the resurrection. Uh, and this is our prayer for today, and our scripture will be about that uh, as well. So please pray with me now. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to open with this lovely song, Great is the Lord. Is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole earth. Great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on our knees. And Lord, we want to lift your name on high. And Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. And Lord, we want to lift your And Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. It is always right to remember who God is and praise Him. That's really all that song does, is remind us of that. We want to lift your name on high, for you, are God, you alone are God eternal. Let's continue to praise God with Psalm 138. You can join in with me as I read it. I will give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart, and before the gods I will sing your praise. I bow down toward your temple, and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and for your faithfulness, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is on high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Thanks be to God. Amen. All the kings of the earth will give thanks to you, O Lord. We probably don't see that happening in the world, but the Bible tells us that will happen. Uh, some of those kings are going to be pretty surprised <laughs> when it happens, but it is going to happen. Uh, someday the Lord's 
sovereignty and reign and rule over all things will be perfectly plain and inescapable and unstoppable to everyone. So do not be discouraged by the uh, somewhat crazy state of things in the world sometimes. God is still in charge and he will bring all things to exactly where he wants them to be. Now we're going to continue here in the, as I mentioned, with the focusing on the Easter. This is the uh, Gospel of John chapter 20 and we have a scene here on Easter evening, the evening of the Resurrection Sunday. And some famous moments in here, I think, as usual, uh, that you'll recognize. And this is what John writes to us. On the evening of that day, this is right after the resurrection, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. The doors being shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Easter evening, and it's uh, not surprising at all that this story, these scenes have um, generated a lot of curious questions uh, uh, such as how does Jesus go through walls and uh, what kind of body does he have? He's obviously really there. He's obviously a real body, which is why he says, look, touch my hand, put, put your finger hand in my side. It's me, it really, it's really me. So he's, it's really him, it's a, it's a body of some sort, but it's through the wall and comes and goes at will and obviously does not have to obey the regular rules of nature. So we can't help, uh, people cannot help speculating what kind of a body is this, what kind of a body is this, uh, etc. And uh, all sorts of, all sorts of questions that come up there. And then, of course, we have the famous uh, scene of Thomas that led to him always being referred to as Doubting Thomas, Doubting Thomas, when really, when we look at Thomas, how different is he, you know, than most people or even the other disciples? Uh, They didn't believe Mary when she came and told them, I've seen the Lord. They were all afraid of the Jews. They were all shut up in their room, not knowing what to do. 
And then Jesus comes in and shows himself to them, and then they believed, you know. Thomas wasn't there. He says, well, I want to see too, you know. So we, he's, he hasn't quite got a fair shake, Thomas, because he's not much different than uh, your average person. And he's certainly, certainly very much like modern people now who uh, have uh, exist now in a world that's very scientific and we're very, very uh, used to having proof of everything and seem to demand a lot of evidence for everything and everything has to co sort of, before we believe it, it has to be shown to us all these, uh, all this data and everything now, we become less and less spiritual, more, more and more mechanical, we're more and more physical, more material, or say, uh, like, no, 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 I got to see the hard, hard proof here. Uh, that's, a, that's a barrier to faith. That's a barrier to faith. As Jesus says, there's, there's something really blessed to those who are able to believe without having to have it absolutely given to them, shown to them like this, me personally showing up this way. Blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. Now, and isn't that all of us, you see? Isn't that all of us? Because our faith is based on the witness, the witness of this message and these men who are commissioned, passed on down through the ages, empowered by God's Spirit that takes that message and implants it into our hearts and minds, not physically at all, spiritually, by God communicating that knowledge to us, you see. And what a blessing that is. What a blessing and how wonderful of God to make His truth available in such a completely universal way by His Spirit. How limited it would be if, if Jesus personally, physically had to be with every single person <laughs> to, uh, to, to believe. Um, yeah, that, that the whole faith would not have gotten very far, obviously, would it? I mean, just as wherever he could be, that's the only place it could be. Um, so that, all that is very good news for us. Thomas does believe, and then further on, we believe. And these things are written so that we will believe, and we do believe, and we did receive it. So exactly the way God wanted it to go. So all that is in the story. All those wonderful things are in the story. But what I really am most struck by is what Jesus does and Jesus says. Three times in there, three times, every time he shows up, what is the first thing he says? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is the first thing he says and gives. What is that peace? What is that peace that Christ gives, right? If the, the simplest way to put it, it is the peace of knowing you are forgiven. These men had abandoned Jesus, they'd failed him, they'd run away. Even now they were still cowardly locked up, uh, fearful for their own safety. Uh, they must have been, the, the prospect of meeting him and how they had let him down must have been a very dreadful thing for them to think about. And then suddenly here he is appearing to them again. And what is the first thing on Jesus' mind and Jesus' intent when he sees them? Is it to condemn them and judge them and say, how could you guys abandon me? No. The first thing he says is, peace be with you. I forgive you, is what he says, basically. I forgive you. This is the peace of Christ. It is living with that certainty of his forgiveness, his grace upon us. That is what the whole point of this is. It is not that we are really good people and that we are uh, try hard to be holy or anything. It's that we know that because of Christ we are forgiven and reconciled to God. I cannot ever measure up to the standard that I know 
that, that God deserves of me. I, I know, I, I simply never can. And the only way that I can remain peaceful, if I dwell on that, goodbye peace, right? But if I remember Christ and what he did and what he promises, and he's just coming saying, Paul, I know how imperfect you are. I died for you, and I forgive you, and I accept you, and you belong to me. Now stay focused on me and receive everything I have to give you. This is the other thing he does now. He says, peace be with you. Then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. All right. This is almost like John's little version of Pentecost here because he, we see in the, uh, later on in the book of Acts a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a very dramatic way, very public way uh, that day. But here, too, he begins to... He begins to introduce them to the Holy Spirit in, a, in an intimate way, these, these people, these 12, just these 12, these 11 here. Uh, later, it'll be more like 100 some who get it all at once, and then it explodes. The Holy Spirit explodes out uh, after that. But first, he breathes on them now. I'm sending you, all right, getting them ready, getting them ready uh, to go. Receive the Holy Spirit. Then. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven. If you retain them, they're retained. That's a little mysterious to try to understand what he means by that. But he's clearly connecting the entire thing of receiving the Holy Spirit and ministering into Christ's name with bringing the message of forgiveness of sins. This is the commissioning that they are given. And this is the message we are all given. When we prayed in the beginning there of the service to God that may everyone who confess the faith also reflect what we believe in our life. Again, I don't hear that as saying like, may everybody be perfectly righteous and holy, but may everyone reflect that peace. May everyone know that peace and that that will be the evidence of Christ's presence in us. See? That peace, that knowledge of forgiveness. That we've received that message and we're forgiven. And then you can have peace with God, right? Now you can begin to be the person he means you to be. But if it's, if it's a constant uh, struggle and effort to try to figure out what am I supposed to do and uh, how, can I, how can I please God and how can I make sure I'm a good person to go to heaven? There's, where's the, there's no peace. There's no peace in that. The only peace is in receiving the peace that Jesus speaks out to us and gives to us. There's the peace. Now we can hear him. We can hear the Holy Spirit. We can hear the scriptures when we, when we uh, read them and study them. And when they're preached, because we are, we are reconciled with God and we're in, in a healed relationship with God, we're able to hear Him and hear His Word and be affected by the Word of God and the Spirit coming to us. Then He will send us as He was sent. That's the final thing I want to mention. What does that mean? Well. How was Jesus sent by the Father? His Father loved him and loves us and sent Jesus. Uh, so he sent him. Did he send him on vacation? Did he send him to, uh, well, Jesus, you're going to earth and I'm going to send you to uh, the Caribbean and you're going to be on a nice yacht and, you know, sort of sunbathe and fish and float around and enjoy the, enjoy the beautiful weather. It says, ah, no, that was not it at all, was it? You're going to a, an obscure little pro provincial town with uh, the people I've chosen who just can't seem to keep faithful to me, uh, who are full of all sorts of disorders. They're going to really resist you. They're going to really make life tough for you. They're not going to want to hear you. They're going to be very unjust to you. And finally, they're going to torture you and kill you. That's what he sent him to do. And all of that is part of my plan for reconciling the, the world to myself. That's how he's sending these apostles. 
The book of Acts follows this uh, Gospel of John in the Bible, and I'm sure some of you know are familiar with it, and if you're not, I really encourage you to read it because you'll find within a very short time, uh, just a couple years, all the, a lot of these men in this room are finding themselves imprisoned and uh, whipped and tortured, martyred, uh, scattered out of Jerusalem, uh, running for their lives. Um, Virtually every one, every single one eventually dies a violent death at the hand of some enemy, but that does not stop the message. It does not stop it. Jesus' death didn't stop it. The apostles' death didn't stop it. The Spirit has it. The Holy Spirit who has breathed into the world has taken it and continues to spread it so that all of us who have never seen are able to believe, be believed. This is happening by the power of God alone. The gospel is the power of God at work in the world, you see. So whether or not modern, very technologically oriented, skeptical people understand that or not is not for us to worry about. Uh, by his power, God will, will make certain that those who belong to him are going to hear this. This is why in my own understanding of the gospel and, uh, and, and, and understanding of salvation, I'm a firm believer in the doctrine of what's called election, right? That, that, that uh, salvation and uh, reconciliation to God is a matter entirely of God's sovereign grace. It is God who comes it's God who breathes on us. It's God who gives the peace and forgiveness and sends the Holy Spirit. It is none of these men are doing anything to earn this, you see. Nothing. It's God doing it. And nothing anyone does can stop it. What God has intended, no, no one can stop. So what has started in this room here that night after the resurrection has not stopped. That room was very invisible. No one knew, just a little room there. There wasn't any big public place. You know, it was just hidden away in some little room. And here's the Son of God and these men who became the core of the Christian church. That's where it started. And what started there, it continues on, you see. It's wonderful to think of yourself that way and realize you're part of that. You're part of that, you know. Sure, we can feel kind of insignificant and small and afraid like them. And um, well, the world's so busy and big and powerful and all, da, 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 and all this. Yeah, whatever, fine, fine, fine. But God is with us, you see. God is with us. God is with his people. And his power and his gospel is out through the story. So as he sent Jesus, he's sending us. It may be a little uncomfortable now and then. However, remember his words. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, and that is forgiveness, rec reconciliation, and union with God. Let us pray. I pray again, Lord, as we prayed in the beginning, that all of your people uh, in their lives can show forth the truth of what we profess to believe, and that is most simply and fully expressed in the in the embrace of that peace that you have given to us, the peace of knowing you love us, that you forgive us, and we are accepted as we are. It doesn't mean we should sit back and um, just sort of congratulate ourselves and uh, not engage in direct uh, relationship with you, but no, it means that we should allow your spirit to work on us and let you be let you turn us into the beautiful creatures that you intend us to be. So we all pray that that will be reflected in us. But even as that's going on, that that peace will remain secure and strong in all of us. I pray that for myself and everyone listening to me today. I'm so grateful, Lord, as I'm uh, recording this and looking out the window at the uh, balmy uh, sunshine today. A uh, spring-like day is finally arriving after a a sort of shockingly chilly week. <laughs> it's really not very nice. Uh, today's getting nice and the weekend looks very nice. And so our campus is getting so beautiful now. Um, 
that I hope it will bring much joy to our uh, residents as we get out and about and come and go. Um, we're just so grateful for the turning of spring once again. It's so appropriate um, for that to be happening as we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. We do pray for your church throughout the world, which is, uh, well, we have to acknowledge a uh, somewhat um, lukewarm um, witness in many places and in many ways. But likewise, many, 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 many faithful, powerful, strong, sacrificial Christians doing our best to witness uh, and to um, follow in the tradition uh, of the apostles uh, uh, and the historic truths of our faith. So I just pray for your church throughout the world as, uh, yes, it may be invisible as these men were invisible to the broader world. And your, your true church may be somewhat invisible too, but it's hidden and scattered and, and, and found everywhere you go in the entire world. So all those folks who belong to you, I raise them all up uh, to you uh, as one great mystical body, and we're all so grateful to be a part of it. Enable us, O oh Lord, to continue to obey your call, to receive your peace, and to go forth as you have sent us uh, in your name. We pray to you now as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm very sorry about all this sniffling and everything. I've got hay fever is really bad <laughs> for me this year. So this obedience to Christ's commission, as I said, goes on. And for most of us, it just simply comes down to witnessing to our own experience of Christ and be ready to tell what he's done for us. That's what this song, I love to tell the story. Uh, is really about. So I'm going to do it and join in as you can. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and of love. I love to tell the story more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story it did so much for me and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat. What seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard. The message of salvation in God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. 
for those who know it best like you seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest and when in scenes of glory I sing the new new song twill be the old old story that I have loved so long I love to tell So as our Lord said to his disciples, peace be with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. I go to prepare a place for you, and where I go, you shall be also. So have a blessed day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.